blaming their self, like they are the part of the atonement. Blaming themselves? I mean, they are saying like... We, we are, are part, part, yes. And then, but when you look, everybody separate, like Wahhabi, Salafi, Shafi, Sunni, Alevi, whatever. They fight each other, but they are children. Brothers, I don't understand, you know, why, why this thing is happening. You don't understand? I mean, I understand, but I can't sort of find it. Like... <sighs> now, Muslims have always been fighting each other like this. Hmm? They have. They have been split up and they were fighting each other. We stopped becoming an Ummah. What is the Hudbah saying, too? What is the Hudba saying about this, about the Ummat? You're talking everyone is split up, correct? Everyone is fighting each other, that's true. Is it uh, surprising to us? Of course it's not surprising to us. Holy Prophet like, said to us, and that's said 1400 years ago, Islam is going to be divided into 73 different groups. He said it, I'm not surprised. 73 different groups. Muslims are going to be divided. He didn't leave it open. He said, but only one group is going to be saved. One group. Again, he did not leave it open. They asked him, which group is that, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, the ones who follow my sunnah. And he did not leave it open. Again, he said, the ones who follow my sunnat and the sunnat of my sahabis. Meaning what? To follow the sunnat of Rasulullah you have to follow the chain. You have to follow his sahabis. The sahabis teaching that to the tabi'ins, those who follow. And the tabi'ins teach that to the tabi tabi'ins. Continuing until judgment day. We are not Sahabis. We cannot call ourselves Sahabis. Those who call themselves Salafis, they are claiming they are Sahabis. Because the title of Salafi, it is only held by the Sahabi Kiram. At least if they say we are Tabi'in, or Tabi Tabi'in, we say, okay, technically you are right, because you are the ones who follow the ones who follow. So anyway, when did this mm, disruption happen? Prophet Allah said to us, Salam had said 1400 years ago, he had said everything. Everything that is going to happen, he had said. Until judgment day. And he had said it, it wasn't a private gathering. He said it to a very large group of people and he spoke. He spoke and he spoke and he spoke through the entire day. And the Sahabis, they're saying, those of us who remember, we remember. Those who forgot, they forgot. And he said, he did not leave anything hidden until Judgment Day. So this is that secret knowledge that is not given to anyone. But those ones who have that knowledge and they will do something about it, not just having that knowledge and just sitting or fighting on the internet with each other, I have knowledge, I have secret, you don't have secret. They're doing something. What are they supposed to do? Is it to condemn people? Is it to pronounce takfir on people? Or to make fitna with people? Or to go around and just to find faults with people? These days people are doing that, Muslims are doing that, they visit each other and they're just looking with crooked eyes, they're only seeing all the wrong things. It's happening? Of course, it's happening amongst us. That is hypocrisy. That is wrong. You see something wrong, there's a reason why Allah is showing that. You're seeing something wrong, maybe that is showing something from you. Oh, we forgot spirituality all of a sudden, huh? This is a spiritual value of it, isn't it? But people are judging. Oh, if we have Muslims judging, Sufis judging, what do you expect the whole world to do? It's finished. But how did this happen? How did this break up and people starting fighting with each other, killing each other? How did it happen? 
Did it happen 500 years ago? No. Did it happen 300 years ago? Did it happen 100 years ago? Not even 100 years ago. 1923, the office of the Hilafat was abolished. Who is the Sultan? Would by saying, who is the Sultan? He is a shadow of Allah on earth. Holy Prophet is saying, the ones who hate the Sultan, Allah hates him. Are we understanding how heavy these words are? Yet as the majority of the Muslims, you want a Sultan? What Sultan? We want precedent. We want Arab Spring. What Sultan? You want us to bring us back? Yeah, back to that peace. Back to that Ummah. Back to that civilization. Not forward to this barbarism. So there's no more sword. The sword it is sheathed. It is not taken out. That's what Hazrat Umar used to do. Before he gave the khutbah, he used to take out the sword and put it and he says, you better listen to me now. Who was he doing this to? Unbelievers? He was doing it to the Sahabis. <laughs> you understand? Who was sitting there? Hazrat Osman was sitting there. Hazrat Ali was sitting there. Hazrat Abu Huraira was sitting there. The Sahabis, he was saying, you better listen to me now. That is a Sultan, that is the sword of Allah. And he's a shadow of Allah. But then that time you can keep people Whenever there is confusion, it can be stopped. Some confusion, it can be stopped. I'm not saying we are romanticizing 14, 1300 years. No, there are so many other things that happened that were wrong. They burned the Kaaba. Yes, it burned the Kaaba. And the Ibadis, they took the Hajar Aswat and they ran the extreme Shis. Hajar Aswad was not there. But there was always a Khalifa and there was always a Sultan. And Shaykh Mawlana, Hazrat Ali and Shaykh Effendi, they have been talking about the Ottomans all their lives. How they were ruling Islam properly. For 100, 600 years, giving everyone their rights. Letting even the religious minorities to rule by their own laws. There are so many of them. They have a choice. Either if you do something wrong, you can be ruled by the laws of, say, Musa salam, or the laws of the Christian laws. So many of them, they say, we opt to go to the Sharia court because they understand that the Islamic law, it is very merciful. So why we start all this fighting? Because the Hilafat was removed. Then what happened? Then Muslims, instead of trying to bring the Hilafat back, they allied themselves with the tyrants, yes, who removed the Hilafat. That continue up to today. Say. So what? So what? Yazid's army, they were slaughtering Hazrat Hussein and his family, Ahlil Bayt. Can we understand? The grandchildren of the Prophet, they were saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. In fact, they were saying to each other, kill them quickly. Otherwise, we're going to miss Zuhur. So what? In fact, how many times we've heard this? It was a hadith you could see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending an angel to punish a city because it has transgressed its limits, because it's become zalim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I have forbidden tyranny to myself. Allah is saying, I have made zulm to become a zalim haram to me, Allah is saying. So zoom, it is not for you. Allah was going to send punishment through this angel of this city. 
saying they have passed their limits, punish all of them. And the angel saying, it is known to you, Ya Rabbi, there is one man there and he's worshipping you day and night. He is a believer. He makes zikr, he makes namaz, he, re he reads the Quran, he does everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his knowledge is saying, for that one, punish him ten times more. Oh, why? Because he did not stand up for haq. Because he decided to just let the whole city do whatever that they want. They are his people. That one, meaning those ones who are given the authority to speak. Those ones who are given the authority to say what is haq and what is batil. Not, that authority is not given to everyone. But at least, Holy Prophet is saying what? You see something wrong, correct it with your hands. If you cannot correct it with your hands, correct it with your tongue. If you cannot correct it inside your heart with your heart, but know that is the lowest level of faith. That is the lowest level of faith. Nowadays, we cannot even have any uh, thinking in our heart about so many things that are wrong, correct? You say, gays, they are wrong. You cannot think that is wrong. Brother, please don't judge them. We're not judging. It's a good person. That action it is wrong. So many other things. See, don't judge. Meaning we cannot even think it now. So where is our faith? So they're saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So what? That's exactly what Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq did. That's how we need to know our religion. Whereas it's tied up with, Christ, uh, with spirituality and everything, everything it ties up. Because this has to do with understanding what are the tricks and the traps of dead child. This is a fitna box here. This, correct? How are we using this? That's important to know. We have to understand where we are going to be on which side. We have to understand which age we are living in. If we are preparing ourselves for the fitna of Dajjal, then we have to understand where is it. It is not something that is simple. Oh, please, you keep talking about this. You're getting going to get us all paranoid. No. No one here is paranoid. No one here is always looking behind their shoulders. In fact, they look inside, like below. Correct? Because we already stay away from those things that confuse us. That's why we are here. Correct or not? I mean, we lived, I lived in Manhattan. I lived in New York City for over 10 years. And half of that time, I live in Harlem. And we know how difficult it is if we are living in that materialism. How difficult it is to hold our faith. You do something good, you feel something strong, you look wrong, everything finishes, correct? You look here wrong, you think wrong, because everything is wrong. It's different here. That's why I said before, Wasim to Abdullah, I said it's more free here. At least your spirit can breathe a little bit. You have to try hard to find, to see wrong things. Over there, you cannot even look to the ground. They print cards with wrong pictures and they put it on the ground. So even if you don't want to look anywhere, you just look to the ground, there's wrong there too. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was the one that is most merciful. How does he say, you know? The most halim. That his own daughter Hazrat Aisha is saying to the Prophet, do not make my father to become the Imam because he's too soft. He will recite and he'll just cry, he'll just cry. But he went to war. And when the Holy Prophet wasalam, one of the last things that he said was, continue with that battalion to the Byzants, to Rum. 
don't pull out. And when Prophet ﷺ was veiled, the whole of Arabia, listen very carefully, the whole of Arabia, they became mutat. They betrayed the Prophet ﷺ. They betrayed him. And they were not only betrayed him, they were going to come to attack Mecca and Medina to finish the Muslims. That Hazrat Umar was saying, Ya Abu Bakr, we need the troops here for defense. Otherwise, these animals are going to come to get us. And Hazrat Abu Bakr, the Halim Salim, one turned to Hazrat Umar and saying, Ya Umar, what happened? You became a woman. His Prophet says, we have to keep going. We will. And what else did he do? He was saying, these people are saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There was one war that he went to. It wasn't to unbelievers, it was to Muslims. That these days, subhanAllah, you're going to see majority of Muslims say, brother, please don't fight, brother. Muslim and Muslim fighting is no good, brother. You should talk it over. You should be a... Are they going to pronounce takfir on the Sahabi Kiram if they understand what the Sahabi Kiram went through and what they had to go through? He went to war with a group of Muslims and he said to his troops, he said, today we're going to war against our own brothers. They say, la ilaha illallah, we say, la ilaha illallah. They pray five times a day, we pray five times a day. We give zakat, they give zak uh, zakat. That was the cause. Because that group of people, they say, we're not going to give zakat. We do everything else. But we're not going to give zakat to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is saying, we are going to war with them. They look exactly like you, they pray like you, they fast like you, they go to the Hajj like you. When they are fighting, they are going to say, Ya Allah. And it says, but when we fight them, we are going to say, Ya Muhammad. This is not a story. This is real. And the time that is going to come with Mahdi alayhi salam. Mahdi alayhi salam is going to carry that furqan, the saif of furqan, that sort of separation, that sort of truth that is going to separate. For what reason? Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is saying, if you're holding a newborn child and Mahdi alayhi salam takes the takbir, drop your child. Meaning whatever that we love, whatever that we, is, we are attached to, if it is going to be a hindrance between us and Mahdi alayhi salam, he says, drop it. If we're not learning it now, the time is going to come where we're going to, because of our own, uh, so much mercy that we have. Mercy, you know, not real mercy. We think that we have more mercy than Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, more mercy than Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, more mercy than Allah. We are going to be amongst the tyrants because of that. And we are going to lose a lot. If we don't know now, if we're not sure about what is right and what is wrong. That is one of the fitna of Dajjal, to say there's no right and wrong, there's no black and white, everything is grey, everything is acceptable, everything is okay. It is not. This is not what our sheikhs are teaching us. You understand? So, so many groups, they're all saying that, doesn't matter. People can say it. But those ones who are sincerely saying it, they're not going to do. They're going to say, then they're going to do what they say. Yeah.